Yeah. So yesterday we were um, basically doing some refactoring. We ended up getting to this design, which was nice, um, where we've got uh, a game object that's responsible for rolling the dice, knowing when the game is over, communicating with the scoreboard. Um, and the scoreboard is is uh, does calculate the total score, um, is responsible for assigning roles to category, and we'll see that we've we've got a nice nice uh, refactored code for that. Um, today we're we're gonna go uh, finish all the categories that we want to score, um, and then start tracking the used categories because that's an important part of the game. So we'll go do that. All right. So, um, so this is uh, where we left it yesterday, where we got to a good point. We did this, um, what I thought was kind of nifty, uh, ENA map of, of score category to consumer of dice roll. And so pretty much we just use the lambdas. Uh, and when we need to do a score as, we basically grab the category, um, we pull it out of the map, and what we're going to get back is a consumer that takes a dice roll and then to send it the dice roll and that will uh, increase the score. Uh, oh, the delay between live and a chat is quite big. Um, yeah, sometimes there's a delay. It's all good on my end, so I'm going to blame Twitch on that. Yeah, sometimes it can expand to like 10, 10 12 seconds, which is unfortunate. But... Oh well. well, we'll deal. Yeah, I mean, part of part of the where I'm going to knock over my pile of books that's right behind me um, one of these days. So, um, yeah, so sometimes depending on, on how Twitch is going, uh, as an affiliate, um, it can re-encode at different, uh, different download speeds. Um, and sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. Let's blame Lumbach. <laughs> yes, let's let's blame Lumbach for, for all our woes, because why not? Okay, um, so today what we want to do is uh, go ahead and um, let's let's finish just finish out these uh, uh, these these scoring things. Um, let's go to our yacht score test. Uh, whoops, not that one. Yacht. Or not score uh, number categories tests. Um, we've got ones, 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 fives, threes, fives, twos, sixes. So what do we actually have uh, left to implement here? We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got all the numbers. Um, the full house. We know that there's a bug there somewhere. Hey, Sam Gearing. Welcome, welcome. Nice to have you here as always. Um, remind me, Simon Gearing, I have some more, uh, a, a PDF that I'll throw into the resources uh, channel on on, uh, on the Discord. Um, so we've got actually all of the number categories. So basically the scoreboard, we can just add <clears throat> um, add more of these. Um, it, it does make me wonder though, is there some more refactoring that, that we should do here? Uh, but for now, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the duplication. So this will be twos. And this will be score plus equal yacht score. Uh, or is twos. Roll. So I'm I'm not really feeling like I need to do any tests here because I'm um did I be though? I mean I could put stuff in the map wrong. Uh but I don't feel terribly strongly about that. Because there's no behavior here. Um, we've already tested the map, so really the only thing that could go wrong is simply that we put stuff in the map incorrectly. So I'm going to um, make a judgment call that I'm not going to do that. Create an enum constant. Uh, 
Uh, Some gearing says thanks. That'll be helpful. Had success with writing TDD validation components today. Oh, cool. Okay. And Tramstars says hasn't looked at Discord, I guess. <laughs> and now, and now Tramstars has. <laughs> As fours. Do that. Um, or I'm feeling a lot of redundancy here. But I don't I don't want to focus on that right now. <clears throat> fives. This is fives. And we'll create an enum constant. Yes, in case you all haven't noticed, uh, you probably have. I've been working on um, a little bit of reorganization, adding a couple of channels, not too many, I hope, um, to the to the Discord. Fives. And I am always open for suggestions if there's anything uh, you think is needed or or needs to change in that regard, um, do let me know. Let's organize these six. Okay. So that's all good. Um, the ones, twos, threes, fours, five, sixes. Ones, twos, threes, four, five, sixes. Ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes. Okay, let's go commit that. Um, added remaining numeric categories. Oh, great. Yeah, I actually stole that idea from, from some other discourse. It's like, oh, that's a great idea. Because um, I think it helps it help, helps us... I mean, playing with the different icons is a limitation. I, like, I can't just use made-up stuff. I have to use Unicode. Um, but yeah, I thought that worked out really nicely. All right, so that's all good. Uh, we should just run the test just because I don't see how we could have broken anything. But hey, you never know. Yeah, I have to figure out the roles, some more roles. Um, I've been adding roles sort of behind the scenes uh, for some things. Um, uh, like like Afi is a moderator. Um, but uh, I'm open to ideas right now. I don't I don't usually roles are, are useful in Discord when there's a, when there's channels that's good for one group and not appropriate for another. We're, we're not that large yet, so I don't I don't know that I need to go. Uh, I could just add a role and then have everybody in it. For what that's worth um or at least uh active folks i might do that but as i said i'm open i'm totally open to ideas uh they are test pass so <clears throat> uh we want to do tracking use categories so let's go let's take a let's let's um pop out all the way to the top uh of our ui so that will be basically our yacht controller um, we do have a select category method, uh, assign role to category, and we should, uh, should have tests for that. But we do. I don't know that we have a UI for that though. Have a UI for that? Uh, where is our UI? That's role results. Oh yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> It's been so long since we've been in this file, I totally forgot. So, um, oh, so we should totally try this now. Uh, ones, twos, threes. So that should do a submit. So let's, let's call this through. Um, so that will basically increase the score. Yeah, that should work. Let's go run it. That's running on port 9090. Oh, let's, uh, eh, I'll leave that. We might, we might, 
uh, localhost 90. Roll the dice. Uh, ooh. Oh, I don't. I didn't set up sixes. Dang it. Let's score in the threes category. So this should give us a score of three. Uh, except it should actually not go here. Because we could just keep scoring it as three. Um, so at least we know the score is incrementing. Let's add some scores of one, so we know that's working. Uh, but we do need to um, change a bit the, the flow of flow of this. Because uh, what should happen is after you select which category it's in, you should basically go back to... Um, should show current score. Huh. So we've got a few things that we could do. One is um, fix up the the flow here. Two is and, and sort of related to that is have the scoreboard display the categories to which it's been assigned. I think the latter will push us in the in the direction we want because we do want to track categories. We know we want to do that, and so that functionality. Uh, in addition to showing just the score, but showing the actual categories that you've used, right? Because if we go back to, way, way back to uh, the game rules, I had somewhere, I'll have to bring them up again, uh, Yacht, Dice Game, So this is sort of the, the the score sheet layout that we're gonna we're gonna want. Um, I think right now it'll we're we're just gonna have one round, so it'll just be total for ones to so on. Um, that's the upper section, the lower section. Right now we just have the full house. <clears throat> um, we could probably go with something even simpler. Uh, yeah, so I think we we're, what we'll do is we'll have um, one column that shows the category, and then basically just your score. Uh, basically, it'll show the dice roll. So we'll so we'll have to save the dice roll. Um, that's interesting. If we just save the dice roll, we can we can calculate the score on the fly. That would that might be interesting. Um, not sure if we'll do that, but we'll need to save the the basically the the dice roll and the score. Okay, uh, so let's let's mock that out in our. Um, in our roll result. Page. Um, let's uh, let's put a break here, and so what we're gonna want is um, <clears throat> I guess a table. So we'll create a table. Uh, and we'll create, uh, create a, uh, create a header row. So this will be, um, category, uh, roll, and then, and then we'll have score here. So, uh, we'll have three columns and that's what we'll have. And now what we want is to use the uh, time leaf, and we want that loop. Um, and I always forget the syntax. What was it? Uh, do it somewhere else. And we did it in the other project. <laughs> I always forget the four syntax. Um, I really need to create a cheat sheet. Cheat, uh, cheat sheet for that.
Let's see. Oh, that's the wrong release. Oh no. Hello, Fuel Snable. Welcome. So uh, let's see. Boop. Four. Not the one I want. Yeah, I want it. Oh, it's each. That's why. What the heck is TH4? All right, this is what we want. We want the TH, TH each. I really do need to create. Let's see. So those are going to be. Um, so these are score categories. Uh, so we'll just call them category in categories. Uh, and that comes from there. Uh, then we'll have a TH. Uh, sorry, TD, TH, X. And this will be category dot. Um, description. And so this will be ones. And then uh, we have one for Transfer 25 years dev Google how to make a for loop. <laughs> Again, it's what you know, it's it's so funny because it's one of those things that um, unless you're I mean, it, it, unless you're using something on a regular basis, it's going to get, you know, harder to retrieve that information because it's not used as much. The more you use it, the more it's retrieved and that path, you know, is 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 laid really smooth. Um, but I, I, I can't remember. I mean, I'd probably have to look back on the stream the last time I used the each. Certainly not this past week. Was it even last week? I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know. That's why I need. That's why cheat sheets are useful. They're sort of. Um, I don't need to know how to use it. I just need to remember the syntax. Uh, so category, and this will be a roll. So dice roll. Uh, React is HTML tags and CSS. Only reasons why I could ever learn Angular or React. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this this stuff is again. It's it's like if you don't use it, you lose it. Right, you use it or lose it is really what what it's all about. Um, the, the dice roll. Uh, Feel snable. I've also been messing with web UI, although my twist is as usual WebGL, of course. Uh, pretty fun to integrate WebGL and regular content. That sounds cool. I, you know, WebGL is something I'd love to get into, but uh, I have limited brain space. Right, so there's only so much I can do. And so this is the score. Um, and this is the score for the category, so we would do something like that. Okay, so what does this look like? Um, wow, that looks awful. Let's, uh, let's prettify our, our table just a tiny bit. Um, SS. Let's see. Um, I don't want bootstrap. Go CSS tricks. Uh, I don't want just striping. I want styling a table. Yeah, exactly. That's what Chi-Chi is for. <laughs> That's true for Fuel Snable. Is I, 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 know, I know my Java loops, although even there sometimes I need IntelliJ's hand. Um, but uh, the time leap syntax, you know, I use it once on a page and I don't use it again for weeks. Um, and yes, there's all, like, there's... Luckily, I, I don't know the VB6 syntax offhand either, although I probably would not get it wrong if I tried. Yeah. Uh, 
Let's see. Do some. Take a look at that. Uh, so we want maybe some border. I don't know. We'll see how that what that looks like. Uh, should I bother putting this in a CSS file? Nah, we've got room here. Let's put it in here. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, oh, that's on the table. We actually want... Alright, that's not going to work because we need to put this actually... Put this in here. Uh, and so this needs to be on the... This needs to be on the... T what is that? Grab that. Got that. We got TH and TD. And we got the TD, no wrap. Not that I think it'll wrap, but that'll prevent the dice roll from wrapping if it happens. Uh, and then table. Just like switching back and forth syntax between like CSS and, uh, and HTML. Oh yeah, all the stuff about dimming arrays and stuff in, 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 in basic. Good old days. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Okay, that's that's kind of good enough. I am tempted to, to do some further cleanup, but that's good enough. I don't want to um, I don't want to bike shed the 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 UI much. <laughs> All right, so we've got the layout correct. We've got, um, let's put in a longer category name so that way we can see the layout. So full house. Yeah, we want that left justified, uh, right? So what is that gonna be a line? Uh, text align, yeah, the text align. I miss my tailwind, but I don't wanna pull that in here. Um, so our THTD, our TD is going to have text align left. No? No? That's not left aligned. Actually, I don't want all the TDs left aligned. Uh, I'm going to kiss these days. A bit of VBA to know what's good for you. <laughs> Feel sane. Well, anyway, third third day of vacation, of course, rewarded the migraine. Oh. Uh, lucky you get an indication that there's an issue at work might need help out with. Ugh. Sorry to hear that. That, that stinks. Okay, why, why am I not getting, um... Why is that TD not being styled left? Am I, am I, this is one of those things where it's like, what is wrong with me? Oh, are they aligned and actually, uh, there's padding? Hold on. Oh yeah, there's quite a bit of padding. Oh, I forgot, there's, I added that padding, so that's just the padding. Okay, never mind. That's fine. 
Uh, I could add another row to it, see what it looks like, but that's fine. No, tables, tables do have a use for tabular data. I actually had that fleeting thought of, oh, should I use, should I use CSS grid? And, and no, it is a table. I mean, I could do that, but this is a table. Okay. Uh, okay. So we're good enough here. Um, so let's actually put some stuff in here. I really would like to know why, um, Why IntelliJ sometimes has no problem with this, and sometimes it puts a, a wavy underline. It's like score, I'm certainly adding in to the to the yacht controller when I'm returning the roll results. What are we complaining about? Cannot resolve NB. Oh, because I shouldn't be adding HTML. That's why. Uh. And now it's just saying there's a typo. Okay. Uh, is that why I couldn't figure it out? Oh, interesting. Okay, well that's useful to know. So uh, so what I just noticed was um, Timeleaf allows me to put .html in here, which is technically wrong. Um, you're supposed to return the name of the view, not the name of a file. Now it turns out the Timeleaf packs on .html figures out where the template is and finds it. Um, but if you do that, IntelliJ doesn't like it because it doesn't, it thinks that's kind of wrong and it kind of is. Uh, and so that's why IntelliJ was getting confused here. Now it says, oh, score is fine. Um, because it, it, it was trying to figure out, well, where is this post coming from? Or where is this page getting rendered? So it can inspect the code to see what, what you're putting in the model and see if everything matches. So it's great. Um, if you, Given IntelliJ the right information. Or just use CSS framework. No, no, I don't need a CSS framework for a freaking grid. Oh my god. <laughs> like, you don't even need boot. You don't need. I mean, even if I were doing CSS grid, you don't need it anymore. CSS grid has everything you need if you want to do grid, grid layouts that are not tabular data. Um, uh, Grid's too much effort only because I don't know it as well as I know table. I'm sure we could figure it out and it would look exactly the same and have taken us another 20 minutes. Um, I don't know that that's a bug in IntelliJ. Uh, I actually think that, that it's correct because I really should not be returning .html. I really should be returning the name of the view. I think it's more time leaf as being uh, a, a little chill and saying, ah, you typed HTML, I know what you're talking about. I got you. Um, you use table layout in your WebGL stuff because that's what you did in 1998. <laughs> uh, good things never change. Okay, so now we can go to our yacht controller now that all that's clear. Um, and now what we want to do is we want to add an attribute um, that's going to be basically the category. So we're going to need to get that from somewhere. Um, uh, and where we're going to get that from is the game um do we ask the game for the scoreboard um so we'll basically get a uh, scoreboard for board categories Uh, this will certainly not be um, in anything that uh, will, so we'll need to create a DTO. So let's do that. Uh, do I want to write a test for this? I don't think I need a test for, for this. This is... Um, Especially since we've got compile check, and we know that we're going to have a categories in here. We know we're already processing the page correctly. Um, if we wanted to, we could uh, could go to the web test. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Not want the web view. But again, 
Uh, so we do get home page, post a roll shows dice result, post a select category. So it's redirected. We could do a check that I, I don't I don't feel the need to do that. Um, so what we want though, uh, this is gonna be basically a list of some some view DTO. Uh, Tramstar, do I still use DTO's DB class and class name without prefixes domain class? Pretty much, yeah. I try not to use just DTO. Um, I, I'll use DTO on the database side because it's pretty clear what's going on. But on the on the front end side, I, I prefer to be um, a bit more explicit about the role that it's playing. So I'll typically use view, request, and response um, depending on, on how it's being used and, and not just DTO because there's several different kinds of DTOs uh, that I might use. Okay, so let's go uh, create a class. Uh, this is basically going to be a score category category um, view. This is meant to be displayed in a in a in a view. And so then this is pretty much going to be private uh, string description. Private string dice roll and private string uh, could store this an int int string int string store as a string. Okay, uh, let's generate our getters and setters. And so now we can go and create create that. Uh, thank you for the hydrate. I'm gonna caffeinate if that's okay with you. Um, create B-O-D-O-D-T-O model, we just have too many of them. Yeah, the, the old B-O business object, no. That, no. No, flashbacks. Um, isn't DTO class for transferring data between classes, not for fetching from DB? Uh, Prix says DTO is mostly used for DB related actions, fetching or select between classes. That's TOBO. I think that's DAO. So DAO is is, is uh, a data access object. Um, BO is business object, which I don't. I mean, that's just their, your domain. Um, all this stuff, I'm just having flashbacks to Egypt Enterprise Java Beans. Uh, so, so Tramstar, DTO, to the way I look at it, is um, the thing that crosses the boundary between the domain uh, and the adapter. And so it's a transfer object. Uh, I always think of it as like, you know, packing stuff in a box so you can send it out. Um, and then you unpack it from the box so you can create real stuff. So uh, since since a database is external and it's in an adapter, it is a DTO. It uses a DTO. You remember when that was hot? Enterprise Java Beans? Oh my god. What a disaster. Um, looked good on, on paper if you're an architect. Otherwise, it was horrible. <laughs> Never understood the beans part. That's, I mean, it's so funny because Spring was a reaction to to Enterprise Java Beans, and, and now sometimes people complain that Spring is too big. It's like, yes, but at least it's usable. You know, we may not like all the annotations, and we may not like some of the stuff, but it's way more usable uh, and, and testable than, than EJB was. Uh, DAO, uh, oh, that's, that's going back a bit. Uh, DAO isn't the adapter between the DB and the JDBC, sorry. Yeah, so I mean, um, I don't use the term DAO very much. Uh, I always think of it as like, it's the thing that's responsible for translating the requests, so the actions. Um, and I think that's what you're saying, the React, the, the actions that you want to request from the database, um, from the domain side, and then talking to the to the concrete JDBC to, to do whatever. Or hopefully it's something higher level than, J, than JDBC. Um, and so a lot of folks, when they're when they're doing stuff in Spring, will will use DAOs. Um, I just use repository because I think it's a better pattern to, to think about. <laughs> so does rationalism. 
we've talked about rational rows, real time addition, and 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 if that were a thing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, all right, so let's get these categories. Uh, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to, um, um, let's see, what do we want to do? We want, uh, we want to translate, um, or view of something like that, uh, This is going to be interesting. So in our domain, we don't have this defined. So we'll have to define it. Um, um, scored category, is that what we want to call it? Uh, Tram starts, does it make sense to have, let's say, a user class an adapter map to user DTO and then give that DTO, give that to domain package. Uh, not 100% I'm, I'm getting what you're asking. So if I have a user class <clears throat> um, and I want to store it in the database, I will have a, I will probably just have a user DTO unless there's multiple ways I'm storing it. Uh, the DTO will be in the adapter package. The user is in the domain package, and the repository interface is in the domain package. Uh, and then the implementation, the adapter, is responsible for converting the domain to the, to the DTO. I talked about this when I when I went over uh, my uh, TDD game. So uh, if you look back at that stream, um, or you can just look at the not TDD game, um, Kid Money Manager. Although TDD game, I might have done it too. I don't think I did any persistence there yet. Uh, in our, uh, Simon Gear says, in our world that often gets called XXX entity due to entity framework. See, still see a fair bit of repository pattern though. Yeah, so the entity framework um, in .NET, yeah, I don't, I don't know much about that. So what are we gonna call this thing? In the domain that represents basically uh, a category that has been filled. I'm thinking scored category. Um, that's a bit close to our enum, which is score category. Oh, hey, Ava, you'll be back in a few minutes? Okay. Didn't know you were here, hi. <laughs> um, do we wanna call this scored category, filled category, used category? Category? I feel like scored category is okay for now. I'm not crazy about it, but we'll go with it. Um, so let's go create that. Uh, but I'm not going to fill it in just yet. Because um, I'm getting close to the point where I'm feeling like we're going to need some tests somewhere. Uh, so view of, this is basically going to uh, give us a list of uh, score category view. Score category. Uh, and this is actually also going to be a list of scored category. Scored categories. Okay. Uh, and then this can return a, a new list. No. We'll return an empty list. Actually, we'll return, uh, let's actually return a list of, we're gonna sort of fake this out for now. Um, just so we can finish with, with our, what the, the UI looks like. Uh, and so we'll basically say new score category view. Um, actually, let's do score, Oh. Variable. E1, that was the best you could come up with. IntelliJ, I'm disappointed. Uh, so let's set description to um, uh, threes. And we'll set uh, the dice roll to uh, 
one, three, 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 four. And we'll set the score, therefore, to nine. And then we'll put the view in here. Um, oh, let's change this. That should actually return the list of. Yes, okay, good. Okay. Uh, so this should now work from the point of view, uh, we should see basically uh, the hard-coded category. Um, let's uh, let's rebuild and let's try it out. Roll the dice. Well, well. What happened? Uh, could not parse category in categories. Really? Um. Why not? I wonder if it just didn't get refreshed. Let's just let's rerun it from scratch. Try that again. No, really? We put categories in there. Um, cannot resolve category. Why not? It's right there. Is is my syntax wrong? Did I did I copy the wrong syntax? I think I need that cheat sheet. I'm leaf. Oh, I did the syntax wrong. Dang it! In must be from view. And that's why I always get confused because uh, uh, it's that syntax. Because of course, let's use different syntax. Now it's happy, and I should have I should have actually looked at, at, at this first. Okay, so... Um, what was it, its actual complaint? Um, could not parse as each. This is the problem with with parsers is that if if the error mess if you don't put in good error messaging it's really hard to figure out what went wrong. Because it really could have could have told me, like I don't understand in here. But we, yes, we don't get confused, so we're fine. Probably pop that on a sticky note. I have too many sticky notes. That's the problem. I'm, and also, I'm not sure which that you're referring to, unless it's, I need a cheat sheet. Um, definitely need a cheat sheet. Let me remind me to. to yeah, yeah. Ted's code snippets. Chat's Discord channel. That's a good idea. And it's like I have this stuff. It's just I I I don't have it um, ready at hand. But I do have this stuff. Like I built a whole training course around this. I can teach, but I can't do right. Okay, we figured that out. Let's um, let's re re reload this, and now we should be fine. Um, okay. So let's go back. Fresh, roll dice, and now we're good. Okay, good. So we got our, um, although it's funny that this doesn't match this, but that's because we faked this out totally. <laughs> Make a new PR with the four loops and text. Yeah, with the each to be in. 
I'm glad that it wasn't that accepting because this is sort of the problem with languages or or syntax or things like that is once you start making it like, well, you can use this syntax, you can use this syntax, you can use this other syntax, they'll all work fine. Um, you end up with code that n nobody can understand because it's now local, idiomatic, whatever people decided which one they wanted to use. I actually like fewer, um, fewer options, if not one. Uh, so that I can just know what the right way to do it is. A sticky note which says update the sticky note. Yes, that's my, my primary sticky note. Um, all right, I'll create a sticky note for all the good it'll do. I'll use orange. Maybe that'll help. Okay. All right. Uh, so that works. So I think we're fine with the front end controller level, right? So now we we've got that working. We've sort of faked it out, but now we need to to, to drop down <clears throat> to to the next level. So let's go do that. Um. What was that? Here. So this is all good. This is faked out. We'll fix this uh, once we get uh, scored categories working. Oh crap, did I mess up Nightbot? Dang it. Hold on, let me fix Nightbot. Let's see. They is supposed to call... Oh, I can't call an alias from an alias. All right. That's a bummer. You would think it would just keep continue resolving. All right, let's fix that. So that's that. Uh, I really need to get my bot my bot working so I can stop using this. Oh, I know where I put the sticky notes. That's not the problem. The problem is, is looking at them when I'm in a position to do something about it. Um, we don't. Well, there's a difference between like bashing for for no good reason and a, and a rational technical discussion. So, let's see. Does this work? Yes. Okay, good. Um, looks like it just gets crumpy. <laughs> Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get scored categories. So um, that means uh, in our test, uh, oh, uh, we should, are all our tests passing? Uh, let's see. Because if so, we should actually do a commit. And they should, because we haven't really added any tests, so that's not surprising. Okay, so let's... Uh, do that um, added uh, view of score scored categories to the role results page currently fake information okay um, Word categories. Okay, so what we want is in uh, a test. So let's see, what test would be would be nice. Um, that scoreboard scoring test. Uh, I think this would be a scoreboard category test. Scoreboard. I really, my fingers want to type an uppercase B for that B in scoreboard. Scoreboard category test. Let's create a test um, that uh, if we score against the ones category, then we get a scored category that's in there. Let's 
So score roll in fours category results. Returns score or category. Something like that. Not crazy about that, but we'll work with it. So If I want to do this to check the the connection between game and and the scoreboard, um, let's put some fours in here. All right, Preak, thanks for stopping by. Have a good sleep. All right, uh, and so then on game, we want to say game uh, scored categories. No, scored categories. Uh, for now, I think we can just say um, I create another I, uh, okay, fine. I was going to create a, a, a post fix for this, but I, I won't do that. So let's do this. So assert that right now we can say uh, is not empty. Um, although this will fail because we're not actually assigning it. All right, Tramp Stars. <clears throat> have, a, have a good night. Welcome back. Uh, so we have to say game score. Assign role to. Oh, we're actually saying assign here. Assign role. Because that's what we're really doing. We're assigning it. So assign role to uh, fours. Uh, and that should give us that. So this should fail. Uh, let's run all our domain tests. And indeed it does. Let's go fix that. Um, so what we want is to get something from the scoreboard. Uh, which we can just ask for the same thing. So this is just delegation. I'm a little, a little uncomfortable with all this delegation, but I guess that's okay. I mean, that is its responsibility. Uh, I just don't know if, if that's too much for the game being the middleman. We'll have to think about that. Hey, DevChats, am I your favorite streamer? Aw, thanks. Um, wow, and even though you don't write in Java, and I like the way I like the way you spell favorite. You're like, huh? It's spelled right. What are you talking about? Uh, so here we'll let's return an empty list. So that just now delegates to that, and so now that in this test here, um, it should fail with basically an empty list. We lol. How's it going? I don't think I've seen you in chat in quite a long time. All right, so now it fails. Um, um, okay, so expecting actual not to be empty, so now uh, we know that works fine. Um, so let's uh, let's go into scoreboard <clears throat> um, and let's just return a list of new uh, score scored uh see here i made the mistake it's not a score category it's a scored category dang it which means this is this is okay
I would like a better name than scored category to represent uh, basically the, the triple of um, the category name, the, um, the dice roll, and the score for that, that category. But I, don't, I can't come up with anything right now. Uh, so here, what we want to pass in is, um, wow, we don't have any of this information, so we can hard code it. Not that. That. Uh, so this is our dice roll. We'll pass in that. Uh, <clears throat> the category is going to be score category dot fours. Pull this out to a variable. I don't know why IntelliJ likes to prefer E1. Just because that's what list of is expecting. It's usually not what you want. Uh, so that's that, that's that, and then the score. Um, I'll just hard code it, that's fine. Um, so that, we'll create a constructor. That takes the score category. That takes a dice roll. That takes a score. Oh, Wheelol, thank you so much for the tier one gift. Very much appreciate that. Thank you so much. Have a good second. <laughs> thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um. I am doing pretty well, actually, cons all considering. Um, <clears throat> very busy with, 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 with my training, which is good because that looked like a disaster a few months ago. Hey, Dr. X Easy, welcome. Nice to see you. Okay, so what we wanna do is uh, let's store these. Um, oh, I love you, IntelliJ. That was awesome. I was like, oh crap, am I going to have to write private final for each one of these things? Nope, IntelliJ did that for me. Did you see that? Did you see that? Find constructor parameters to fields. It just wrote it all for me. Isn't that awesome? Uh, training. Yes, I'm doing on. I, I, I as, as you probably know, I am a trainer by trade. Um, but since there's no in-person stuff going on anytime soon, I've been converting over or I've been asked to convert over some of my training to online. Um, and so I'm delivering some of that in a couple weeks and then early August. So do I want them final? Uh, yes, this is pretty much going to be, um, this is pretty much a value object. Or just use multiple curses. I could have done multiple curses. No, IntelliJ can't replace us, because they can't. It still does silly things sometimes, like E1. No, come on. Well, if they fix that, then I'm out of a job. Uh, so, um, Just wondering at, at how useful this object is. <laughs> Just because I don't want it. Yeah, maybe maybe E1 makes so much more sense for some reason. I don't know. Uh, so let's say public um, uh, score category uh, score category, and we'll return score category. We'll return score category and uh, dice roll. Dice roll. Turn roll. Uh, and this will be an int score. No, not get score. Uh, return score. Okay. So that's that. Now we go back to scoreboard. So that now works. If we go back to our tests, this should 
now work? Well, it's certainly not going to be empty. Um, we'll have to change our assertions to be a bit more explicit. <laughs> uh, incompatible types. Right, because that's supposed to be a D. Do that again. Now what? This messed up too. Dang it. All right. Okay, so that passed, um, but that was somewhat insufficient. Uh, so let's bump up our, our, let's crank up our assertions here. Um, let's just grab the first one. Actually, we can do this. Uh, contain, contains only once. It contains only, verifies that the actual group contains only the given values and nothing else. Uh, if its duplicates are also considered found. But I want exactly the elements and their, I actually want that one. Yeah, that's what I want, okay. Uh, we want it to only contain a, uh, Yeah, perhaps there were too many double negatives there. Uh, so we want a new, what? We want a new scored category uh, that has... <clears throat> uh, this. And the score should be 12. Which is kind of what we had hard-coded there. Um, <clears throat> this may not work because scored category doesn't have an equals. And it doesn't because they don't match. So let's go create uh, an equals. Uh... Okay, now it should work, unless we got no equals for some of the sub pieces. Nope, that works fine. Okay, good. All right, Alfie, thanks for stopping by. Have a good one. Okay, uh, so this works fine. Um, now we'd like... Uh, a test for assign two roles to separate categories returns to uh, two entry and two scored categories categories. Um, I think now we can hop down a level to uh actually before we do that let's do a commit um so what do we do here uh now we're uh starting to track uh Roles find your scoring categories. I am not able to spell categories very well, am I? Wait, I'm almost misspelled it again. Okay, with that. Okay. Um, so let's drop down to the scoreboard. 
so scoreboard. So we'll instantiate one of those. Uh, we'll stick those in a variable. And then scoreboard, we can do a score as uh, <clears throat> I thought I deleted those methods. Or oh these should be these should be private. That's what's wrong. Because nobody should be calling these from the outside anymore. because uh, they're supposed to use the, the score category. Okay, that's better. Good. Okay, good. Uh, so we'll score this as... Uh, we'll use sixes. And the dice roll. Let's go create a dice roll. And this will be... Let's roll sixes, uh, and then we'll create another one. Fives. Five. Five. And we'll score that one as fives. Okay, and so now, uh, yeah, okay. Now we need to assert that the, the game, not the game, the scoreboard, come on, uh, its categories, well, should have size of two. We can be more explicit, but certainly should have size of two at least right now. So if we run, if we run that, uh, that should fail because we're only returning one. Uh, why am I running all the tests? That takes too long. I want to run the domain tests. Right, so we got expected size two, but was one. Should I make a two string for this? No, nah, I don't think so. Okay, so let's fix this. Uh, so now we'll need to keep track of things when we score. Um, hmm. This is gonna be a little Ricky. Uh, well, okay, so what's the simplest way to get this done? Um, we need to have some way of storing the uh, What are we going to store it in? A map? Map of score category to dice roll? And so that's going to be our um, score, uh, scored categories. And we'll just create a new hash map for that. So... Or categories... Okay. So let's see. Uh, so scored category... Mm. 
Hmm. I'm storing the score category and the dice roll. Uh, then this could be a map. Um, let's see, what do we want to map? We want to map the, um, what do I want to do here? I don't, do I want the entry set? And then stream on that? And then on that we can map, uh, <clears throat> we want a flat map. Uh, no, we don't need a flat map. We want a map. Oh, this always hurts my brain whenever we get into maps. <laughs> um, so what we're what we're getting in uh, so given a score category. Uh, be something like like that. So return new scored category, and so we get uh, let's read this to just entry. Entry dot, uh, uh, that's the key, and entry dot the value, and then we'd like the score. Which is we don't currently have a way to do that. So we don't have, so we can, uh, I mean, I can make stuff up. Uh, and this is going to basically be to list, uh, collect to list. And this should be return, and then we can get rid of this. Oh my. Uh, oh, and we can place a little lambda. Not that that helped much. So what we're doing is for each entry, we are converting it into a scored category, and then collecting that into a list and returning that. Uh, the problem is, is this value is the score for this specific role, for each role, which we don't save anywhere. Um, of course, we don't save... I mean, we could do it when we... when it gets added. So instead of just incrementing the score... Like, we have, we have a bunch of options, because we can... Um, add the roles to the map, and then score at the end. Uh, right now we're sort of scoring on the on the on the way like as something gets added we increase the score but we have no idea what what caused the score to increase and right now the um, our consumer uh, all these methods return void hmm 
Hmm. Well, so what we could do is basically get rid of these private methods altogether. Which would be nice. And the map would simply be a map of the category to the yacht scorer method. And then when we want the total score, we just iterate through all of the entries and calculate the score. That might be nicer. I think that's a way to go. All right, let's see if this if this gets the test to pass, though. Dang it, I didn't want to run all the tests again. Web test too slow. Uh. Oh right, we're not we're never adding to that map, right? Let's add to the map. We'll cheat here. Um, so scored categories. Dot put, and we'll put the score category with the last roll. Uh, let's rename this because it's just a speed dice roll. Okay, so now and let's only run the domain tests. Now I think that will fix things. Uh, looks like I do need to add on scored category. Uh, my guess is because the score is wrong, because it was expecting something other than twelve. Uh, it was ex oh, it was expecting twelve. Oh, it was expecting fours. Oh, wait. Wait, what? All right, I need to add a two string here because otherwise I don't know what we actually got back. That. Do that, okay. Let's run that again. Now at least we'll see why they're different. Um, oh, it had zeros in it. Really? Were we not mapping it correctly? We did assign roll two. We've got our stub dice roller. That should be that. That should be that. So, um, interesting. We created a new scored category. Uh, problem with the constructor. I don't think so. It's just a pretty basic constructor. Um, so we're streaming. Score category to dice roll, that's what entry is, and the key, uh, that's, yeah, that's the score category, that's that. Uh, so this is going through the game, and that's forwarding it to here, which is forwarding it to here. Why are those all zeros?
Hmm. So I must have taken too large a step somewhere. Um. So here. Here. And the constructors in the right order. These are all typed, so uh, return list of new scored category. Um, Board categories I'd get. I'll get that. Uh, entry set. Actually, let's take a step back. So we got score category fours. Uh, dice ro dice roll of. Six, four, four, three, four, uh, twelve. Okay. Uh huh. So this test passes. I mean, this test fails. That's fine. We expected that because we're only returning one. Um, That's weird. Let's do this. So this this test um, is going through the game. Let's go directly to for one entry directly to the scoreboard. Uh, assign single roll to scoreboard turns score for that category. Yeah, I'm trying not to use the debugger. So I know, yes, normally I would, I, I, I might do the debugger, but um, I feel like now there's, there's maybe a missing test. Uh, so let's grab our scoreboard. Uh, we'll create a dice roll. Actually, we should just copy that. <clears throat> so grab this dice roll, and we'll score this as uh, category fours. With the dice roll. Uh, and then we should assert that the game scored categories, not game, scoreboard, come on, uh, scored categories, uh, and then that contains only once of this thing. So let's just run this test. So that passes. So this gives us a bit more information, right? So if we run all the tests in this in this test class, um, this is sort of triangulation in a, in a different way. Uh, what we've got is when we go directly to the scoreboard, it works fine. When we go through the game, assign roll to category fours, that's not working. So uh, there's something wrong with with when uh, our stub roller is fine. In our game using that dice roller. Aha. So we basically had, and this is the problem with going through game. We forgot to roll the dice. Right, so we were not using we were not using uh, the game correctly, um, and that's why we were getting all zeros. Yeah, because basically it it means if I have a uh, something going weird and 
then I need to like I I I feel like this helped me say what is different about these two without going through the debugger because um, I feel like the the debugger doesn't work on that. Um, you're sort of just tracing through code, just seeing what happens and, and sort of not being clear about what you're looking for. And I kind of like the idea of saying, well, what's different about these two? My hypothesis is that my scoreboard is working correctly and that my game is working correctly. I'm just not uh, using, I did not use the game correctly. Yeah, I, I feel like the, the debugger is, mainly it's a crutch. And so sometimes you have to use it. Um, but I feel like exercising that ability to, to, to say, okay, what test could help me sort of triangulate what's going on here? Um, and so by basically saying, well, we went through, we went through game, it didn't work. We went through scoreboard with two, that worked. What if we go through scoreboard with one, that worked. So clearly then we know that there's some difference between these two. And we didn't have to run through the debugger. So now this should work. Oh, no. Oh, this is two rolls. Yeah, because we're now hard coding it. So let's let's undo the, the hard coded thing that we did, uh, which is here. So we'll basically delete this, put this back. Uh, now expect it to pass. And it does. Uh, and sort of this is this is the problem some uh, often actually uh, this is the problem with testing against something that's that's a bit too distant. We had to do this extra work uh, to get to get this to work, and it's not obvious really that that you need to do this. Uh, we only did this to sort of bootstrap our way to get to the point where we could have something that. Uh, we could access through the game and that that the connection between game and scoreboard was working uh, but really we wanted to test directly against scoreboard so cool uh, um, all right so let's go commit that uh, let's run all the domain tests hey there uh, metal effects not sure if I'm pronouncing it with the right emphasis on the syllables, but welcome. Uh, what is TDD? TDD is test-driven development, and it's a technique for uh, instead of writing code first and then writing tests later, um, one of the main things is that you write your tests first and then you write the codes to pass. And uh, But it's more than that, it's actually you write the simplest possible code at each step along the way, and then once all your tests pass, you can then take a look um, are there ways to now clean up my code now that I've got now that I got it working? What do I need to do to clean up the code make it easier to read easier to understand? Um, possibly You've discovered something along the way Hey there Welsh boy welcome and thank you for the for the answer too All right, so all our tests pass um, and so let's go uh, commit so um, Yes, Dr. XMCZ is correct, uh, and it's actually not too late to join. We've got, we're, we're reading through the first part, but there's not a lot of pages. It's not a lot of, and it's not hard reading. Uh, so if you want to join the book club, uh, hit up the Discord, find the book study channel, uh, and ask for uh, an invite to the, to the club. Um, basically every Sunday at 11 a.m. Pacific time, which is 1800 GMT, uh, we chat for a few hours um, about what we've just read and our experiences and things like that. Thank you, Dr. XMCZ. Appreciate that. Okay, so we now have um, our scoreboard tracking in a very ugly way. Boy, is this ugly. Uh, we've hard-coded the 12, which is not great. Um, so actually, we're not quite ready yet to... Well, we'll commit. Um, Tests for tracking uh, assigned roles to categories uh, is somewhat working, but we're not testing the results deeply enough as we've 
hard coded the score for each category. Okay. So now uh, here, right, we just said has size of two, um, but that's cheating. Yep, no worries. You can ask questions. That's that's why I stream. If I didn't want people to, to interrupt, I wouldn't be streaming. My stream is based on people interrupting me. <laughs> Um, all right, so what we actually want to do is we want to say uh, contains exactly. Um, and so we can pretty much do new scored category of uh, here we want sixes. Uh, and the dice roll sixes. So I'm passing. So while before I was actually copying this here, um, I feel comfortable enough that uh, that equals sort of worked for this that I don't need to, to sort of create a new one. Um, and for sixes, how that's going to be scored, that would basically be a six. And a new scored category. Uh, this one is fives. And this is dice roll fives. Uh, and that should be ten. Okay, so now I expect this to fail because those scores won't be correct. Not only there's no such thing as a dumb question, there's no such thing as, as, as uh, an inappropriate question, other, if, although you may ask something and I may say I have no idea, which I do a lot. All right, so it does fail because the, the, the score, we, we got 12 for both of these, which was hard-coded, where we, as we expected, six and 10. So let's go fix that. Um, this is going to be this is going to require a bit of a deeper fix. And so what I was mentioning before Cool. Well, welcome to the stream. Uh Metal Effects, Metalifax. How do you want me to print Metalifax? I'll pronounce it that way. <laughs> but welcome. Yes. Most people don't do Java on the side. Usually say the other way around. Usually they do Java at work and then J JavaScript on the side. Oh, from Halifax. Okay, so I'm at Halifax. Cool. So it's kind of funny to, to, to have people who, who do Java on the side when it's not their main job. But love to see that. Okay, so what we what I discussed was, well, first of all, we got to get this 12 fixed. Um, the only way we're going to get this 12 fixed is if um, we have a way to store that information somewhere. Uh, but I think the first thing I want to do um and we can get that and boy oh that's gonna be so messy uh what we'd like is something that calculates uh i mean we could do it we could basically say score as um the score category which is entry dot or we could put that in no i don't want to put that in uh, entry dot get key, which is our score category, and then entry dot uh, get value. Um, the problem is that right now this doesn't return anything. Uh, so we'd like to change score as to actually return. Do we want to do that? That's that's. I want to do that. Not comfortable doing that because score as is basically a um, a request or a command to this scoreboard object, um, and I, I generally don't want to have commands returning information. Um, we can calculate it uh, because we just have the the map, and right now that's a consumer, but we're, we're going to make that a, um, basically a function that it takes the dice roll and returns the score as opposed to just uh, adding it. All right, Simon Gearing, have a good evening. Thanks for stopping by. Remind me to send you uh, the additional stuff in the resources channel. 
Hopefully I'll remember, but I'm not good at that. Um, so I think what we'd like is... Uh, let's... Let's see, what do we want to do first? So we're not going to do score as, we're going to do... Um, This really should be a sign. Sign something. Oh, hey, the IDB, welcome. Um, so, what is a straight? Uh, Uh, Dr. X makes easy. Uh, that is correct. Basically, I'm accumulating the roles. Roles get assigned to a category, and that's how you score them. Um, but you can only assign, you can only use, uh, each category can only be used once. So if you've already assigned to fives, you can't assign to five anymore. Um, and then you, you, the score is basically the total of how you would score for the role for each category. So, so far with the game, we've been sort of scoring on the fly. Right, as a role is assigned to a category, we score it right then and there and don't save any information. And now we're basically finding that we have to switch over to, well, now we actually need to retain all of the, the things. Um, so I'm not worried about the total score just yet. Currently, we're, we're returning that. What I'm worried about is figuring out, and I, and I, and I know where I want to go. I'm just trying to figure out how to get there. Where I want to go is I want to just sort of do this. Um, and then have a way to uh, pretty much using this score for that specific category with this specific role. Um, and uh, I can do it. Uh, and I need to do a refactoring, um, but I can't do a refactoring until I get back to the, back to green. So, uh, I leave that, yeah. So I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write some really ugly code so I can get the green, and then we'll do some refactoring. So I'll create a new method that returns an int that takes the score category and a dice roll, uh, and basically, um, oh, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna basically do some copy and pasting. Good times. All right, so we're gonna create a private, um, we're gonna create another map. This is gonna map score category uh, to a function that takes dice roll, not functino, that's something totally different, but function. Uh, and let's import function. Come on. Um, oh god, I would never want that. Uh, so function that takes a dice roll and returns an integer. Um, and this is, uh, score or... Or I'm just going to score a map because I can't think of good names right now. And this is going to be an enum map. Um, and it's score category dot class. Okay. And uh, all right. Uh, no, I have a test. I have a failing test. Um, oh, I skipped. Hey, Rhino. How's it going? Um, are there actually methods to TDD SQL things? Uh, so you can TDD anything as long as you can write a failing test. Basically that you can have an automated test that can fail where you can then write some code where it can then pass. Um, if you've got business logic in your SQL, you mean like stored procedures, then it gets a bit more difficult. Um, but if you're just using an ORM, uh, you could 
You could use it. I mean, you could do direct. I mean, as long as you have something that can, in an automated fashion, run the SQL and look at the results and do some asserts, uh, you can totally TDD it. Um, it depends what you're TDDing, though. So it's, uh, yeah, so I'll stop there because you'd have to describe more what, what you're trying to do. Um, Java ORMs don't put stuff in stored procedures. Those you would have to write your own. Uh, but you you can totally, you should, I know there's some ways to, to TDD stored procedures, but in general, uh, my, my, in my experience, the inability to, to do that easily means I usually don't end up using stored procedures. Um, but you can totally write them and you could write code, you know, in Java, you're, it won't be TD because your test might take a little bit of time to run. So that's, that's an issue. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sweet Lolly. <Polish>. We're, <laughs> we're, we're actually have a failing test, so we're, we're good. Uh, yeah, so the, the sequels, I mean, that's the, also the other thing is like, if, if your tests take longer than five seconds to run, you're, you're not going to be doing TDD in the same way. And I'm, I'm not sure how useful that is, but you can certainly do tests first. And I think there's a lot of value to doing that. Rhino says, my idea was checking if expected tables and fields exist for the stored procedures, actually, uh, write tests stored procedures, but this depends on the database a lot and how much easily you can nest stored procedures. Um, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I would do a search for like unit testing, TDD, SQL, because I, I, there are ways to do it, but it, it does depend on the database and whatever technique you're using to, to check things. But even if you can't do it sort of as the sort of the very fast cycles that you really need for TDD, um, still doing a test first, I think, provides provides a lot of value. Uh, IDB, do I have to learn JavaScript to understand TypeScript? Kinda. You have to know at least the basics of it, because a lot of the rules around scoping um, and sort of the this reference, uh, you still need to know. Um, you don't have to be an expert at it, but there's the fundamentals that... that because it's still mostly JavaScript syntax. Um, so, yeah, you kind of, you, you don't need to be an expert at it, but you need to kind of be familiar with it. Uh, Dr. X is easy. No, the package was, I, I, my timer hasn't started yet. Okay. Um, we were trying to make that test pass and we were going to basically do some copy paste kind of stuff. So here, what we're going to do is, um, previously we had this map that mapped the category to a method that would basically just change state of, of this object, which is okay, not great. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create um, in our scorer map, uh, we want to put where we say score category of ones um, actually maps to yacht score, uh, score is ones. And so what we've got is this is a function that takes a dice roll and returns an integer. Uh, and so then pretty much we want to do kind of the same thing. All right, so twos, twos, threes, threes, fours, and so on and sixes and sixes and then full house and full house so now we can grab the score map apply this lambda um and heck these should probably be static anyway but i'm i'm good with that um so now what we can do here is our score for uh, simply does uh, return score map. Uh, we do a get on the score category. 
and we then apply the dice roll. All right, so we're basically looking up in the map, we get a function, we hand it the dice roll, we get back the score for that value. So this code is super complex, um, and clearly there's a lot of copy and paste, or there's a lot of duplication, but we'll, we'll fix that. What we want to do is we want to get our tests uh, to passing. Um, why do we still have red? Oh, missing semicolon. All right, so let's run our tests. And now they all pass. Right, so now that our tests are passing, um, we'd like to now clean this code up. Because Lord knows we don't want to leave this mess for somebody else uh, who's going to come later because that's going to be me. All right, Metallifex, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, so what we want to do is we pretty much want to like get rid of this. So let's just do it. Let's just get rid of it. Um, get rid of that. And we can pretty much now get rid of all these methods. Um, and so now we don't need to put this here at all. Uh, now, the only thing that's going to go wrong is clearly score is not going to be working. So we'll have to figure that out. But we should only have broken the tests that are, that are looking at sort of accumulated scores. So let's run our tests. So I do expect failure. And we got. And that's fine. Um, so now what we want to do is uh, we're no longer storing score. So this is, I, I, I love when this happens, right? So basically we're not storing score anymore. Um, we're basically calculating it every time we need it. So what we're going to do is uh, we've got our scored categories. And we can basically do um, entry set and stream. And we have ways to map, not amp, but map. Uh, so for each entry, we can um, Actually, there might be a better, it's actually, I mean, it is sort of a reduce. So can we use the reduce function directly? Um, we need a binary operator that take, so let's see. Uh, we need an accumulator. So we need something that starts with zero. So score equals zero. Um, and we need, uh, and we have the binary operator. We need a binary operator that takes, it always hurts my head. Uh, score category and dice roll, um, which we have. That's basically the score for thing, but we need one that takes an entry. Um, what is this going to look like? Gosh, it's been so long. I, I just don't use reduce very much. So let's go. Let's go get some help. Uh, Java green reduce app. So the binary operator is an addition. Oh, is it? Uh, that may be correct. So. Map, filter. That wasn't very helpful. So, uh, let's 
So it's a function that takes an entry. Uh, and we return score map uh, get of entry key by key get value. Well, that's just the, the map part. Oh, did it? I didn't like it. Um, that's kind of what we want. So, so it's so this maps to just their age. So this is this is already uh, so the identity element would be zero. Uh, this though is not I wonder I think we might need to map it first and then we can reduce uh, the reduce let's see oh there is Oh yeah, so I guess basically I'm, I want to. Uh, so my, I think my intuition was saying I uh, do a map first and then do a sum, because the map, because I still have to do the map and this, I don't, the reduction is not very useful, I think. So yeah, so let's do that. So we don't want to do reduce. Uh, we want to do map, and the map is this is basically this part. Uh, and then we just do uh, the map. This is going to be map to int, and then we can do sum. Then we just return that. Oops. I think that's what we want. And there's probably a way to simplify this a little bit. Um, and we can rename this to entry. Yeah. So let's see, so basically we get the entry set, we stream it out, and we basically do a map uh, for each one that maps to a sum. I think that will work. Let's try it. All right, so all our tests pass. Uh, that's pretty ugly, but we'll, we'll clean it up. So um, let's do a commit. Uh, that's interesting. So we could convert this to a f local. I mean, technically, these could all be statics. Um, but I'll leave it that way. Uh, so we've got the score map, and we've got the scored categories. Um... So let's do a let's do a commit. Let's just run all the main tests. Yep. So replaced uh, accumulating score along the way as uh, dice rolls are assigned to categories, and now hold on to just the scored categories and calculate the score on the fly. Uh, calculate the score when requested. Okay. Um, and the 10 minutes of dark mode is up. That was just enough to get that test to pass. And now, 
You may scream at the brightness. I'm going to breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> okay. Uh, let's simplify this thing. <laughs> See? There we go. On cue. Um, hey, Nazar. <laughs> like the light. <laughs> Yay, I have, I have one on my side. Uh, so... Having to do this, I mean, this is super super ugly. Um, let's at least extract this to a method, which is... Uh, really? It's going to turn a function? Um... Do I want to pull the whole thing out? Or do I want to just pull... <laughs> I think it was totally worth it. <laughs> um... So, well, so first of all, what's interesting is, is uh, we still have you know, about the same amount of setup, but all those annoying private methods completely went away. Um, so now our score is is nice. Uh, I'm not happy with the scored categories conversion. Um, so can we pull out this part? No, not into a variable, uh, into a method. Yeah, let's do that. So let's say uh, this is a uh, uh, create scored category. Or scored category from. Okay, well now, now we can turn it to the lambda. Okay, that's much better. Um, and so now this... Uh, do that oops um, score for uh, I feel like this is this is uh, this is the same thing as this up here. So let's refactor this um, so we can just pass in the entry. Probably a way to do this refactoring wise. Can we inline it? Uh, yeah. That's fine. And then line this. That's fine. And then this becomes entry. We do that. So that's better. And then this becomes... This basically just becomes score four. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, let's run our tests. And they all pass. Nice. Not happy with the name when it looks like uh, a lambda. I wonder if I want to rename that. It looks good here. Uh, it doesn't look so good here. So we've done some nice refactoring here. Um, this uh, this is very messy, but that's fine. Is what it is. 
Uh, okay, so let's let's commit. Uh, refactored um, scoreboard to reduce duplication. So we've uh, we basically got rid of some duplication, made it, and that actually made it uh, nicer as well. Um, as as reducing duplication tends to do. Uh, still not quite sure what to do with this. I almost feel like it's. Maybe somebody else's responsibility? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, basically the score map is the instance variable. This isn't, um, and because we're not passing any, any, anything other than these are, I mean, I don't, I tend, you know, because I don't, I generally don't make things, uh, I don't make static methods uh, more on principle. Um, again, because it's usually caused me problems. Uh, here, it looks weird. But, um, and score category hold the number for score. Well, the score category is an enum. Um, so it can't store any state. However, it could hold, it could reference yacht score. Uh, I'm not sure how comfortable I am with that. Right, so, so this could be, I asked the, the category itself for the and to basically score itself given this dice roll. I think we talked about this before. Um, not not crazy about that. But uh, we could. Yeah, the enum, I mean, we could do that. So the enum could certainly, we could create, it's a, I mean, it's just a class. We could create a constructor. It takes the appropriate thing. Um, but then at that point, why, why bother having yacht score or just stick it right into the, to the score category itself? Um, although the code is a bit complicated, so I'm not sure I'd want to, I don't like polluting enums with, with that kind of functionality that's only used in certain places. Um, my tendency is I want the enum, if it's going to have code or behavior, uh, it should be used every everywhere. Um, so I like having the yacht score separately because it is also going to get more, uh, more complex and it's going to get bigger. Um, although it will get bigger only on a score category by score category basis. So there is... There is something there. Um, I don't, I'm not feeling, uh, I'm not feeling quite compelled to, to move that stuff around. Um, there might be a way to, to sort of change yacht score so right now we use the score map uh, here. So it's possible that we could push push this somewhere else. Polymorphism. Yes, it's a word. Not sure where polymorphism would fit here. Oh, I see. Breaking down the enum into classes. Um, yeah, that's. I don't think that's any better. Yeah, that feels worse to me. I 
I think I'm going to leave it like this uh, and and hope that something else pops out as we add more as we add more functionality. Because uh, they're still missing functionality, so I'm, I'm I don't feel like messing messing around with this more would get me anywhere because um, it's sort of like you know we're we're driving around but we don't know which way we're going and so it makes no sense to like drive and waste the gasoline or maybe not the best analogy but I, I don't feel like without without more information I don't feel like I have a design direction. Hey Yevanesh, uh, how long have I been programming on C Sharp? This is Java, so I've programmed for zero years with C Sharp, uh, but 25 years for Java. All right, so we're committed, all our tests passed. Let's double check just to make sure we haven't broken anything. We'll run all our, all, all our tests, or all y'all tests. Oh, we got a failure. Wait, how did that fail? Wasn't that passing before? Did we not run the tests after we did did some some stuff? Uh oh. What wrong? Oh, because order. <laughs> I don't care about order. So that's contains exactly, uh, but in any order. That's interesting. Okay. So then I guess that isn't that just contains only? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Uh, fixed incorrect assertion for a test. We don't. Well, we might care about order. Actually, we will care about order because when we show all the categories, we want to show them. Uh, oh, that's going to be interesting. We want to show that we want to show all the categories, even if there aren't entries for it. Or maybe not, but we certainly want to show the categories in a, in a specific order. Uh, but for right now, we don't care. Um, it might be a, a, it might still be a hash map, but it might be, we might use a tree map or we just, but when we're converting, this might be a, a pure display thing. So when we're converting to the views, then we, we basically, um, order by the, the, the key. Uh, you have an S. Yes. I remember, I remember Oak. I certainly remember Sun Microsystems. Um, and used to go to the Java One conferences when they existed on their own way way back when. Uh, I used to write a column for, for uh, I don't know if it's still around, but there used to be a weekly newspaper magazine-like thing called Network World. So I used to write a column uh, about Java. But this was in 97, 98. So yes, I go way back. Yeah, so I don't think I don't think we need to change any of the internal structures. I think it, I think the order that we show stuff in is purely a display thing, uh, and that'll be handled in the adapter um, when we do the conversion uh, to the view, which is actually something we need to work on next because right now we've hard coded stuff, so we need to to hook stuff up. So let's go do that. Um, so. Let's, uh, we should pretty much just be able to, uh, let's on this or category view, let's stick in a static method, uh, of uh, or from score category. And this returns, uh, we'll create a constructor, new score category view that takes score category 
Oh, it would help if I had a variable here, right? And uh, let's see, this will be to string. Uh, dice roll. Uh, that's wrong. I think that I think <clears throat> this name is really annoying. The scored category. Boy, I I would love to have a better name because. Score category is the enum. Scored category is sort of the triple of of the things. Uh, so this should really be called scored category view. LJ, what happened to you? You were going so well. So uh, let's. Well, let's rename this. Okay, and now let's go back here. Okay, and this should be scored category. Scored category. Uh, and so now scored category. Uh, so for this, we want the score category that we want to string. Then we want the, uh, what's next? Dice roll, that to string. Um, although we should probably not rely on the two string method. Do I have a dice roll? I may have something that we can use. And then uh, the score, uh, that should just be the score, which we should be able to get from the, oh, that's the score for that category. So that's in there. Uh, and this is string value of. Okay. Um, and then back here. Um, we want to basically return uh, scored categories and we want to map. Um, no, we want to stream. Then we want to map, no, but not map to int. Uh, we want to map, and that's going to be score category view from, and then to list. Uh, I feel like something's missing. Oh yeah, uh, how I, so this, this is how I convert a roll to a string. Um, this may not fully warrant a, a new class, but, uh, I, I may create one. Uh, yeah, so here's where I would sort, that's true. Uh, we could do that, but I don't want to do that without, um, Do I want to do that now? I'd prefer to have a test before I write that code. Uh, so this is something we want to reuse. So let's pull this out into a method. Um, role view. And we'll just inline that here. Uh, although something should have been sent as a parameter. That should be the parameter. Okay. Um, yeah, let's create a role. Let's create a role view class. Uh, 
but not there. So let's uh, let's make this static, make this public, and then we can move this to uh, a new class, <clears throat> and we'll call this role view. And so this will be from. Now, hmm, technically this converts it to a string. Do I want to convert it to a whole object? Uh... I'm gonna leave it for now. See how that looks. Uh, this should be. Why did that? Wait. What happened? How did this not get in the correct package? Oh, that is so weird. Uh, so this should be in, uh, this is in the adapter web. That's so weird. How did it get into the wrong package? So I need to, sh I need, I need to share the representation, uh, view of a role. Um, so I need to put it somewhere, uh, and it belongs in the adapter because it's for the web. So, uh, I think just having it as a static method is fine. Because uh, now I want to use it in the scored category view. Uh, so instead of using two string, I want to do roll view from Okay, so let's run all our tests, make sure we haven't broken anything. And everything's passing, so let's go run it. Would help if I actually ran it, right? Hey, that's running. Let's try it again. There we go. Roll the dice. Our category scoreboard is empty. That's fine. Uh, let's score this in the... I really should add more buttons, shouldn't I? Let's go add more buttons, because we can score all the categories now. Wondering why that's not right. Category gets. Categories it gets. There's a view of. These are scored category views. Uh, and it's got getters and setters. That's interesting. I don't know why it's complaining. All right. Uh, let's add more buttons. We've got. Threes, fours, fives, and sixes. Threes, fours, fives, sixes. Thank you. That should be fours. Uh, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, sixes. Ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. Okay.
That would have made a great fours roll. Uh, we'll score that as sixes. And there we go, sixes. Um, I don't have a roll dice button. So I can score this as a threes again. Uh, so everything is correct. This isn't in the, in the correct order that we want, so we'll deal with the sorting. Uh, but this is scored correctly. Alright, so we've got sixes, and that score is 18 for that. And our total score is 24, so that's all working. Um, so, yeah, so that all, that all is working. Uh, it would be nice to have a, uh... Well, I'd like a nicer UI than, than all these buttons. Um, maybe we put these into the table. I'll have to think about that for a second. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we need to figure out. Uh, so let's let's stick a button down here. Uh, and this button is going to be. Uh, roll. Uh, I don't know if I need a value. Technically, this is a submit. It's going to select category, so actually, it would be in a separate form. Actually, we should just go to the other page. Basically, this. So that should be outside of the form. Uh, Nazar, uh, the sort scored category looks a bit like a round or a turn. It has info about one iteration, a roll, selected category, and resulting score. Yes, that's correct. And yes, the idea, that's the strategy, um, is uh, up to the player to decide the category that they want to assign it to. And that's where, because if you assign it to a category and it turns out you got another role that would have been better for it, oh well, too late. Uh, here we go. Well, um, you can share it in general, uh, or maybe resources. Maybe resources. All right, so let's uh, redo that. Roll dice. Oh, hey, we already had our, I guess the state was saved, so that's good. Uh, so this is our roll, 56322. Uh, let's score those as twos. We'll roll the dice again. Uh, we'll score those as ones. Roll the dice again. Uh, we already used our sixes. We already used our twos. We already used our ones. And now we're screwed. Um, and so this is where the strategy comes in. It's like... I could put it in fours. Or I could put it in fives. Neither one will get me any score. But I have to do something. Uh, although there is part of the game where you get to re-roll a few of the dice, um, I think three times or two times, uh, but we don't have that yet. So we'll score it as fours. We'll get a zero for that. Um, we'll roll again. Our fives are gone, our ones are gone, our twos are gone. Oh no, we don't have five. Let's score it as fives. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Now we have to score as full house, which we'll get zero for. Okay, uh, so that's 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 the game, or at least that's um, part of the game. So we got a forty-one, not great, but you know that's the luck of the dice. Um, so the other thing is, is once a category has been assigned, you should not be able to put a new role into that category. So that's something that we'll have to to work on. For uh, for next time, totally due to me. I I totally had bad strategy. Uh, so we can we can stop it. And um, let's uh, let's commit. So. Uh, Scoreboard play, scoreboard uh, view shows all scores for assigned 
controls to categories. So Yeah, okay. And then uh, added buttons for the rest of the numeric categories. Um, added button to roll dice for the next round, next iteration. Yeah, we made some really good progress. Had some nice, uh, some some nice refactorings, um, and it's kind of playable. The the user experience is kind of yucky, but it it works. That's the important part. Um, that's it. Yeah, let's commit that. Hey, but yes, yay. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and uh, do uh, sort sort the um, yeah. Let's let's sort the sort the view. Oh, my sound hasn't changed. It might be that I'm getting tired. <laughs> uh, so not here because this just does each one. Um, in our controller. So what we want here is before we do the map, we want to do a sort. So sorted, uh, we want to sort it by, can we get an enum sort, an enum comparator? So this will be scored, score category. Let's find out. Uh, enum comparator. Comparator. There's a compare to, can we use that? Uh, ooh, that's going to be tricky. Um, we'll have to extract that first. Yeah, and, and the default order I think is fine for us. Uh, it's just that we need a... This we need to hand it something. What we're what we're streaming are scored categories. Uh, and we sort on a specific item without having to map to it. That's the question. Uh, we might have to put compar uh, put a comparable on the scored category itself. Because I don't think I can do that. Being sorted. Hang on. Yeah, so I could do that, but I'm just wondering if there's another way to do it without having to, to delegate it. I mean, I could just do a collection sort. That's not useful.
Let's see. I mean, I could. Could I do some? Uh, let's see. So let's compare. Uh, I might be able to do something like that. Let's see. So we've got um, the sorted takes basically a comparator. So we would hand in a scored category one, scored category two. I don't think it'll let me do this. Oh, will it? Oh, maybe. And then we can return um, one dot compare to two. Uh, but it's not that. It's actually the score category. <laughs> uh, no, it is scored category, but I have to pull it out. Oh, that's such a confusing name. So it's one dot score category dot compare to two dot score category. Uh, and IntelliJ looks like it'll magically get rid of this and do it the right way. I knew there was another way. That's what I wanted. And I love that IntelliJ magically tells me, oh, you wanted this. Indeed I did. Okay. Cool. So let's try that out. I know I didn't write a test, but I don't feel like this is one of those where when it comes to sort of the UI thing, I kind of feel like writing tests at that level, I don't know, maybe it's just me being lazy. That's certainly possible. Yeah, much nicer, right, than, than, uh, than what we're going to do. So uh, let's restart the application. Oh, well, it would help. Actually, we just need to run it. Roll a dice. Uh, we'll score that as a sixes. We'll score that as twos. Uh-oh, it's not. I wonder if we have it in the. Is it not sorting it? Uh, uh, oops, I cheated. Uh, let's score that as twos. No, I still cheated again. Dang it. Score that as threes. Well, that didn't work. Three sixes and twos is certainly not sorted. I guess I should have written a test. Yeah, I thought I had it in the right order. Um, except it's not. It's, yeah, it's score category, which is an enum, which is one. Oh, I thought I had that sorted. Clearly, I didn't. <laughs> in my head, I I, I swear I th this was sorted, but it's not. So that's my bad. Uh, so six is down here. Twos are up here. Ones, twos, threes, four. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's uh, let's restart that. Thank you, Nizar. You checked my assumption. My in my head, it was uh, it was in the correct order, but it was not. Uh, ones. Uh, threes. One, four, two, five, six. Oh, that stinks. Fine, I'll put in fours. Ooh, close to a full house. That's the bug. So, uh, if you recall, I had noted that there's a bug in the calculation of full house, and that's it right there. That's kind of funny that I hit it. Um, we'll probably have to fix that next time. Yeah, not a full house. Uh, let's roll the dice again. Uh, we'll assign that to... F let's assign that to sixes, and then we'll assign that to fives. Okay, so this is so showing in the right order. 
we cheated. Um, the computer cheated on our behalf. Uh, there is, there is, um, even though that we TDD that, we did not, we were clearly missing a, 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 a baseless scenario. And that happens, right? You, you know, if you don't have a test for it, because you didn't think that was a scenario. Uh, so there's the scenario where you've got um, two of, of two things, uh, but that's not sufficient. You basically need three of one and two of another. And so our code is wrong and our tests for the full house, uh, our full house scoring test is insufficient. Um, oh, and here it is. We disabled it. We did have a test. We just disabled it because we knew we were going to come back to it. <laughs> uh, so we'll get that next time. That was on our to-do list. In fact, that was basically right here. Uh, so we did this. Uh, we did that. Uh, we'll probably have to continue bouncing back, right? You know, bouncing to the outside. What do we need next? Bounce back. Um, I think from a U from sort of a, a Ignoring the, the fact that it looks ugly. Um, there's some stuff around. We have to remove choices if you've already put it in. So we disabled the test because uh, I didn't want to handle it at, right at that point. Um, because I was more concerned about... So I felt like at the point, I think I remember we were spending a lot of time on that. And I wanted to move on with, with some other behavior. Um... It's definitely dangerous, although I would probably, if this were a real project, I would have uh, a sonar lint or something like that um, basically fail fail the integration test if there was a disabled test. Um, but I, I, I felt confident in doing that because I have a to-do list that I'm following. So I, 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 don't, I don't have too much of a problem with that. Um, this is sort of still there. Even though we're tracking the categories, we're not preventing you from reassigning it. So we'll have to fix that. Um, and then... Uh, and need to reflect this constraint in the user interface. All right. Well, hey, uh, another stream where, where we kind of fit stuff in nicely. So that's it for today. Um, let's go here. We are uh, noting tasks for next stream. Um, can't the failing test be used as a substitute for the to-do list to keep things dry? So the problem is, is, is I always want passing tests and when I'm doing refactoring and I want to focus on only one, maybe two failing tests at a time. But if I know that I'm going to get to it and it's, and I want to, you know, I sort of see like the solution space as this sort of growing bubble. Um, but I kind of felt like, well, we, you know, or like, you know, an area to be explored really is, is maybe a better analogy. Uh, and so we kind of, really did a lot of exploring in this area and I wanted to move on to other areas and so in order to do that I sort of had to leave that behind for a bit knowing that we would come back to it but I really wanted to push you know getting the category scoring getting the multiple categories getting the you know um, assignment tracking all that kind of stuff that was much less of an explored area push out to that and then um, now that we're we've kind of expanded the area that we've explored now we can go back and, and clean things up yeah, it would, um, I mean, I might put it, having it as a disabled, and actually I think, I'm not sure if the current version of JUnit has that. Um, Max seems to have frozen. There it goes. I think it was IntelliJ. Uh, so I think, uh, let's see, uh, where is that? In the test. Um, it the current release does not take a parameter or does it oh it does okay uh so it does take a reason this this test was disabled so we could basically say you know 
uh, disabled until we finish exploring other areas C to do. Um, so I think having the dis disabled tag on its own is, is a sufficient to do. And like I said, I would, I would probably have that um, fail if that was found to be in, in, you know, sort of heading to production, like it was in a pull request kind of thing. All right. Um, we updated our readme. Um, scoreboard display now shows uh, the categories signed in the correct order. Had to fix the score category in um order. thanks okay uh so let's do that and we'll commit that uh yep All right, and that's it. We are done for today. And that was um, that was good. Be strong. Be strong.